I've lost count the number of times that the Skog team have removed all these obstructions, tents and everything like that. The reality is no matter how hard the MMDA work, if the barangay allow it, you'll never see a lasting improvement. That's why the DIOG have been talking about holding barangay captains responsible for not maintaining their area after it's been cleared by the MMDA. And just look at this, there's a fire hydrant behind all of these tables and all this junk here. And the barangay hall is just nearby. The problem is that people think a clearing operation means you just clear it while the team are here and then when they leave you can put it back again. And that is actually the reality if the barangay allow it. Good morning everyone, MMDA back on the road, early morning clearing the streets before everyone goes to work. Obviously if a driver comes out they can leave with just a ticket, otherwise a vehicle can be towed away. Not only is this parked on a street where it's not allowed, but it's inside a yellow box and it's inside a bicycle lane. It's just like a triple whammy. Over along you'll find motorcycles parked on the sidewalk, cars in the road and the bicycle lane. And look at the huge sign right there. No loading, unloading, parking, waiting anytime. And it looks like the driver just arrived now. Lucky because they're about to call in the tow truck for this one. And in fact, just a little bit further along, you will see a tow truck hooking up to this one. Again, considered to be illegally parked. What you'll see as you go inside is all the sidewalks are taken by motorcycles. So they're all being issued tickets now and then they'll be told to move them. They could take them inside if they prefer. You'll see the SCOG team removing some of the obstructions. This fan will be ticketed. And then the same thing with this motorcycle over here. I won't be surprised if there's more on the other side. Oh, there's tables, refrigerator. No more sidewalk for pedestrians. The crazy thing is that's right next to an elementary school. So all the school children will be forced to walk in the road. I just heard them calling in a tow truck for this van, apparently the driver's not here. So obviously he can't take a ticket and he can't move it. A lot of people treat the sidewalk as their private parking space, but it's really not meant to be that way. Oh, I didn't realize in the background there, they flagged down that rider. Small schoolgirl, no crash helmet. Daddy has a nice helmet though, an LS2. It looks like this street might have had sidewalks at one point in time. But then obviously now, there's no more sidewalks. Pretty much got overtaken for a private use. But as long as they show a driver's license, they can leave with just a ticket and hopefully not park in the same place again. Of course, it's not just motorcycles being ticketed for obstructing the sidewalk. It's also cars like this. Many of the riders have come out of asked, can't I just push it inside? If it was inside before they arrived, no problem. But if it's on the sidewalk, they're really going to ticket it. Otherwise, you'll move it when the enforcer's here, and then you'll put it back when the enforcer isn't here. A problem with many of these motorcycles is that they don't have license plates. So you have to look for the chassis number or the engine number to put on the ticket. That one that's parked on the sidewalk is being hooked up to the tow truck. They're putting the tow bar at the front now. And I think those motorcycles are also going to go on the back of the tow truck with this one. This Ancas rider was just asked by someone, why doesn't your son have a helmet? He just ignored them and continued driving forward. He'll probably get apprehended in a moment. And there you go. Someone warned him, he had the chance to stop, continued riding anyway, just not taking it seriously. And he's a professional license holder if he really works for Ancas. And there's one more, no crash helmet on the child and also driving in slippers and walking back i can see there's a lot more motorcycles on this tow truck now of course some people would say well we have no place to park but then they'll make really nice improvements and extensions to the building why not also put the equal amount of effort into parking spaces for your cars and motorcycles maybe some of the properties have but many of them have not they keep taking more living space, more living space, more living space, but no effort for parking space. So there's the Barangay Hall, and then look at the sidewalk directly next to it. And this is after they already started removing stuff because they know the MMDA are here. Now, as someone who regularly walks around the streets, I know how hard it is to use the sidewalks. Now, imagine if you're in a wheelchair. Just think about that. People don't care though. Some people do not care. Wheelchair users, prams, even elderly, they need a nice clear sidewalk to move safely. 
even regular pedestrians, people who are very healthy, very fit, very mobile, it's not fair to force them to walk in the road and take the risk of being hit by a car or a motorcycle. And you'll see two more vehicles being ticketed over here. And another one here. There is a lot of signs telling people not to park, but a lot of people just treat a sign as a challenge rather than an order. Jan Langako, but he's driving the wrong way on a one-way street. They're asking for the license now. I just don't understand what people are thinking. They see so many enforcers and then they're like, I'm gonna do it anyway. Another day, another taxi. I really wonder if that off-street parking requirement for PUVs is being enforced. I guess not really. There's three people on this motorcycle and the one on the back is wearing a bicycle helmet. That's an expensive ticket. The helmet alone is 3,000. The slippers is 500. I think excess passenger is 1,000, so...